People often ask the question about impact. What kind of impact do you want to have on the world? And uh, that's a very special term for me. Um, I'm a geek in that regard. So I have, I have a monthly program, and I literally call it Significant Impact Monthly. And, uh, and here's how I geek out on that. Let's start with the word significant. I'm an analytic geek. So whatever you think the definition of significance is, it's great, right? Significance is this ethereal, amorphous thing. Significance to me is, is a statistical term. Significance literally means, statistical significance is deviating from norm or expectation. I like to have significance. So from that perspective, I have to be a deviant. And I like to create a community of deviants, positive deviants. Because I don't want to be in the masses. I don't want to move with the crowd. I never have in my life. I didn't hear it when I was here at Purdue. I haven't in my career. I never move with the pack. I'm always a tail. And so a positive tail. And so when, when people ask me about significant impact, I say, I want to have significant impact, not just impact. And I'm going to geek out on the word impact, too. Because I was an engineer, impact is literally a force put on an object. That's what impact is. So if I want to be deviate from normal expectation and be a force on objects, man, that's my life. As a consultant, that's what you want to do with your clients is have that kind of significant impact. Um, and I'd say that's true for anybody in anything that you're doing. You want to have that significant impact, that unique experience that you bring to, to take this to a new level, a different place. So to me, uh, that's what impact is. So talking about having impact when I come back to Purdue, ah, what I love about this, it's such low-hanging fruit to have impact when I come back because I get to interact with students. And students are typically pretty hungry for, like, give me, give me knowledge, give me wisdom, give me something. Give me something that's gonna make my life go better or easier. And part of this is like listening to what the needs are of students different today than it was. Last time I did an executive in residence was probably about three years ago, something like that. Yeah, it was three years ago. Well, in between that, the pandemic hit. Man, we're just having this conversation today with uh, um, uh, somebody who's running a program out of Cranert, and she said, how do, we, how do we get students engaged in programs? It's like, or re-engaged. She said, how do we get students re-engaged? It's like, you're, you're asking the wrong question. Pandemic's been two years. Freshman and sophomore, there is no re-engagement. You have to sell engagement to them because they've never been engaged the way you want them to. And their normal is Zoom and this and that and masks and everything else. And, and that's their normal. And you're asking them now to change their model halfway through their programs? That, that, you have to sell that to them. And she's like, wow, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it like that because as administrators, we want to just go back to how, you know, re-engage how it was before. It's like, you don't have that opportunity. You've got students right now that you have to sell the idea of engagement to because how they think about engagement is totally different than what's in your head. So, so I think this is a unique time to, to reintroduce people to engage differently. I don't think that's just true at Purdue. I think that's true across the world. You know, there's this whole thing now, norm of like, you know, friends, it's like, uh, do I sh shake your hand, hug? It's like, uh, bump fist, I don't, I don't know what you want. You know, so, so there's this discomfort with, with how to be with people. Oh, but what a great time to reintroduce ourselves and maybe do things differently than we ever did before. I asked some students as we were walking from one, you know, venue to another, and I said, what have you learned during COVID? They're like, what do you mean? It's like, there's something fundamentally different. And these were seniors, okay? So they do have a pre-COVID experience. So what have you learned? Because if we haven't learned something over the last two years, we're doomed to repeat what we've done over the last two years. You wanna do that? No, not really. So what did we learn? How are you gonna engage differently? 
man, if, if you're out there and, and you're a junior or senior and you know what it was like before, man, you should be rolling on your toes going like, like uh, I had this described as like a, when they put the horses in the Kentucky Derby and they put them in the gates, you know, that moment that they put the horses in, you always want to be the last horse in because those horses, they want to run. And so they're kicking the gates and they're like doing everything they can to open the gate for me. Uh, I hope juniors and seniors are going like, come on, be that horse in the gate. It's like, I want this gate to open because when it does, man, I'm going to bolt out of there and I'm going to engage in, in programs. I'm going to be, you know, with other people. That's what I'd hope for people. That's what I'd hope we've learned, you know, over the last couple of, of years. One of the persons that learned how to learn remotely. Yes, huge learning in that, which is great. As a professor, I'd be sitting here thinking, okay, I know I can record some of my lessons. I know I can put that up and, have, and teach some of the stuff that way. But what I'm going to reserve the in-class time for is deep interactional time. Man, if professors aren't thinking like that, man, you're thinking last century. Move forward. Put some of that stuff up. And I, I thought about this at the beginning of the pandemic. It's like Newtonian physics has been taught the same way since, I don't know, Newton. Why are we not somehow packaging that in a way that doesn't take 700 students in a room teaching from a drolling professor talking about Newtonian physics, the basic stuff? Why don't we reserve that talent for, for teaching students in an intimate setting about what's beyond Newtonian mechanics? Let's reserve that talent for the students that are interested in that. And the other stuff, yeah, you can learn that in other ways that you're not sitting in a classroom at 7.30 in the morning sleeping through it. Well, that's not helpful. This is an opportunity to radicalize, radically change and revolutionize education. We've just learned a ton of stuff. Let's use that to going forward. Let's not just go back. I've heard people go, I can't wait till we get back to normal. It's like, what's normal? And if you do that, you've just wasted two, hours, two years of our lives. Let's not do that. Let's roll on our toes and do things radically different.